All right, hello everybody. This is Kennedy Kirby, and today I'm going to be teaching you about Keith Haring. Keith Haring is one of my favorite artists. I own tons of merchandise that has his artwork on it because I just love the way it looks and things like that. Um, and yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it, okay? So to start off with Keith Haring's background, he was born in Reading, Pennsylvania on May 4th, 1958. So it was a long time ago, and yeah. <laughs> so Keith Haring wasn't really interested in the work that he saw in art galleries because he believed it was way too formal. Things like the Mona Lisa, for example, were just really boring to him, and he didn't find them really interesting. And he wanted to make his own form of art that would break the boundaries that he was seeing in the art world because all of it was just too formal it looked too fancy and just too boring for him and he wanted to do something completely different so he was really inspired by pop art and pop art was this art form that came out and really took the art world by storm because it broke the boundaries of everything that art was before and two of the leading figures in the pop art world were Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein, and both of them created works of art that really inspired Keith Haring. For example, Andy Warhol created this artwork over here of Marilyn Monroe and used these really bold colors and different line work and things like that that just really inspired Keith. And uh, their artwork was really based around TV shows, commercials, cartoons, comic strips, and things like that. And Keith Haring wanted to be able to recreate something like that. So after graduating high school, Keith Haring decided to attend the Ivy School of Professional Art in Pittsburgh. And he soon dropped out because he realized that all they were going to teach was formal art. And as we talked about before, formal art was boring. It didn't have anything that he was interested in. And it didn't include any of the artworks that he wanted to learn about. So he eventually moved to New York City. Complete jump from Pennsylvania to New York City, I know. But that's where he enrolled in the School of Visual Arts. However, while he was in New York City, he noticed graffiti work. Graffiti work is art that you notice in the subways that you'll see on the sides of trains in buildings everywhere that you can see and he began creating art in New York subways in the 1980s after dropping out of the School of Visual Arts because of course the School of Visual Arts was also teaching too much formal art that he wasn't really into and as you can see right here this is an example of some of the work that he was creating in the subways. What he would do was take this big black matte board kind of textured stuff and use some chalk on it and create his artworks that really spoke to people um, because it was weird and it was funky and it made people interested. So after people started getting interested in his work because of how strange it was and how it was just everywhere in the New York subways, his career really started to take off because people started to notice his work and recognize it. He began participating in exhibitions. Um, he started with a solo exhibition and then started having gallery debuts and instead of being solo anymore and just doing artwork in the subways, he started creating actual pieces that could be displayed out in the art world. Um, and his work eventually became incredibly well known and he started getting recognition from different companies and brands and things like that. So he started creating advertisements and some of the advertisements he created were for alcohol, he did some for like cigarettes, he did some for MTV, he did animations, things like that. Anything that these people asked him to do, he was down for it if he got to create something just out of the box and strange. So, to break down some of his work, the characteristics of Herring's works include really bold lines. And he really liked the way the bold lines looked because they really made the artwork pop. 
He also included these things called rhythmic lines that were added to the sides of figures and things like that that made them look like they were moving and dancing around. And then he also included simplified figures. So those figures that were dancing around and moving were just really, really simplified and stylized to the way that he liked it. To break it down even further, those bold lines, again, were used to really draw the attention to it because the bolder the lines, the more it pops out and more attention that it grabs. And the simple forms, um, they were very stylized, meaning he took what something looked like normally and constructed it in a way that he enjoyed and looked like his work. So you can tell these are very noticeable figures. Like if you see a figure like this, you'll automatically know that's Keith Haring's work or was inspired by Keith Haring's work. And then the rhythmic lines were included because again, he wanted to make it look like his objects were moving and flowing and things like that. And it really also made them pop along with the bold lines because now instead of just having a still flat image, it looked like these objects were moving and dancing around and having it really makes your eye follow along whenever you see the lines and it makes it look like everything's just jamming and is having a good time in all of his pictures. So some of the re repeating images that he included in his artworks include the radiating baby, which I know sounds really strange, but it is just a simplified version of a baby that has lines coming out of it that look, make it look like it's shining and radiating. It looks like it just has light coming off of it. And then he included many dogs. And as you can tell, that dog is very simplified because I personally have never seen a dog that looks like that. However, when you look at it, you can guess that it's a dog because it's just a very simplified version of one. And even in this picture, he still includes those rhythmic lines that make it look like the dog is barking. He also really liked doing dancing people. As you noticed before, a lot of the examples had people that had the rhythmic lines on them to make it look like they were just having a great time and jamming and bouncing up and down, dancing around everywhere, because he really liked the way that they moved, but obviously they weren't actually moving, they just looked like they were moving. And he also really liked using UFOs. No real reason for it, just really liked the way they looked and liked having just weird stuff that would grab the attention of any viewer and make them think, wow, that's pretty strange, but I'm into it. So eventually, as Keith Haring continued doing his work, they got more complicated and more convoluted because he had a lot more time to work on his art and people were actually buying it and wanting to see it and putting it in museums and things like that. So, as you can see here, this is a really funky looking image, but if you look closely, it's two people attached to each other right here. The only thing that makes it look more complicated is the fact that he added so many lines and those lines obviously take your eye across the whole image so you are looking everywhere around this image because you are drawn to it because of the bold lines and the way that their lines are moving and things like that and then in this one over here you can tell he added some patterns in the backgrounds and things like that but he also included the radiating baby that we talked about because he really loved including that radiating baby and this is an example of one of his mural works. They were very crazy and again, very complicated looking, but it does keep your eye moving and it keeps the viewer interested because each time you look at it, you're going to notice a different thing. For example, there's a giant angel right here. There's a person holding a cross. There's a snake. There's a dog person. There's a campfire over here. And then a bunch of just rhythmic lines and movement that keep your eye moving around the whole image. And here are examples of other works of his. <clears throat> it includes some of the less complicated works where it's just simple people um, dancing, moving around with their rhythmic lines. And then it got a little more complicated with these. This one's a little funky looking, but you can tell it's kind of two people standing there and it just includes a lot of those extra lines and patterns and the colors too. The colors are very bright and catch a viewer's attention. And this one over here is obviously very complicated and has a lot going on, but 
<clears throat> still includes the dog, and it just has a lot of random things going on, but it keeps a viewer interested. Each time you look at it, you find something new, or your eye just keeps moving along. You can't just focus on one thing because you notice something else as your eye moves around the picture. Here's one of my favorites because it's just very strange, very weird, but this giant dog with two people. Very strange, out of the box, but it was Keith Haring's work and that's what he wanted. He wanted something that looks strange. But he was also into the idea of creating artwork that um, had meaning or just spread love, mostly. He just wanted to spread awareness of making sure that you spread love around the world and things like that. And see, he included his dogs and these babies aren't radiating, but they are babies. And still got rhythmic lines, people are moving, big heart right here, things like that. And sadly, all great things must come to an end, and Keith Haring did pass away in 1990 at the very young age of 31, which I know is super young, but he did pass away and his works live on forever. Like I said, I own a bunch of merchandise that has his artwork on it because his artwork is amazing and it's beautiful and things like that. So, we are going to create a Keith Haring art project. So what you're going to do, we know that Keith Haring included a lot of patterns and colors and balance in his artworks, which makes his works interesting and make people notice them and look around them and just adds really nice composition to it. So we're going to be creating our own Keith Haring artwork, which we will be using his design elements and the characteristics of them. So we're going to start by sketching a few simplified people or animals. So like the dogs, the babies, the just dancing people, similar to Keith Haring's, okay? And then you're going to choose your favorite three sketches of the sketches that you made. And then we're going to refine them and make them really nice and look really good. And then after we make those look really nice, we're going to arrange them strategically on a piece of paper to create a final work. So we're going to use six figures. So your three favorite figures, we're going to repeat them twice so that we have six, okay? So we're gonna use six figures and arrange them on the paper. Then we're going to decide two complementary colors to use, okay? Remember, complementary colors are the colors that are directly across from each other on a color wheel. So after filling in the figures with your complementary colors, <clears throat> you're gonna use the colors that you chose and some blacks to fill the background with different patterns that we will discuss, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started, and I'm going to show you um, how to sketch some Keith Haring figures. All right. All right, hello everybody. This is Kennedy again, and now we are at my drawing paper, and this is where we're going to go ahead and practice drawing some Keith Haring style figures. So all you're gonna need for this is some paper, a pencil, I'm gonna use a mechanical pencil, and then a Sharpie. And that's all we'll need for right now, okay? So we're gonna start off by just drawing a simple figure from Keith Haring style. And what I found is the best way to do this is to start by drawing the head. So you're just going to do a simple unconnected circle just like that. See that okay? All right, and now we're gonna add some arms. And to add the arms, you're just gonna go down like this and I'm going to have mine doing a really funky looking dance kind of. And if you want, you can copy this one exactly just so that you can get a idea of what you're going to draw for yourself, okay? So we're just gonna go down like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the elbow. So we're gonna go up. And then we're gonna do a little ball for the hand. 
Same thing like the head except smaller. You're going to do an unconnected circle. And then you'll go down for that arm. And come back up. And see now we have a head and an arm with a little hand on the top. Okay? And now we're going to go ahead and do a little body. So for the body you're just going to go straight down like this. And I'm just doing one side of this figure right now. And then you're going to go ahead and do that leg. So for the leg, I'm going to have it go out like this. It's basically going to follow the same shape as the arm, except the opposite direction. So it's going to go down instead of up. And we're going to do just a little oval for the foot right there and have it come back up and back this way to finish that leg and see we have half a person now so this is the head got the arm part of the body and then the leg and now we're just going to do the other side and you can do it the exact same way so it could be like a mirrored figure or you can do it the opposite way which I'm going to do so I'm going to have this arm going down instead of going up. We're going to do that unconnected circle. Go back up. And then do a little body. And keep in mind this is just a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if it has rough lines, that's okay. And then we're going to go ahead and do this other leg. And for this other leg, I'm just going to do it out like this. Have it come down. And it's basically going to be a mirrored one of the other foot, the other leg. Go up. Up. And then we're just going to connect the legs right there. And see this little funky dude? Got two hands two arms, two legs, two feet, and one head and one body. Perfect, right? But there's something missing that makes it just look a little more Keith Haring-esque, right? We have those little rhythm lines, right? So we add those rhythm lines onto it, and we're going to make it look like our man is dancing. And you can add them wherever you want, wherever you think there would be movement. So I think there'd be some movement in his hands, like he's shaking them. And then I think there should be some rhythm in his knees, like he's bouncing up and down like this, right? So he's going up and down. It looks like his body is just moving, right? All right. So what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and draw a couple of these sketches. Um, just doing different body positions, things like that in the same type of style, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and do a few more examples so that you can go ahead and see what they look like in different positions. So, we have our man like this, doing his little dance. And now I'm gonna go ahead and move over here and I'm gonna draw somebody in a different position. I'm gonna draw somebody to the side. So, we start off with that unfinished circle, right? And then we do an arm going out like this. And I'm going to have these arms going down. Unfinished circle for the hand. And it's okay if they're different sizes right now because, again, still sketches. So if this one looks a little bit smaller than the other one, that's okay. Um, whenever we do our finalized drawing and we figure out which ones we want to use, then we'll uh, decide um, exactly a good size for all of them in our final drawing. And so I'm going to have this one going to the side. So what I'm going to do is have this hand over here come out. Do that little ball again for the hand. And see, it looks like he's going that direction, right? 
And we're gonna go ahead and do the legs bent out like this. And little ovals for the feet. And see, he's kind of facing that way. It looks like he's sitting in a chair going that direction. And you can go ahead and add those rhythm lines again, wherever you think he'd be moving. I think his hands would still be moving, but I think his elbows would also be going. It looks like he's doing a little jig. He's having a great time. You can even make his head moving if you want. Also, some other lines you can do are the ones going out like this, like the radiating baby. So it looks like he's exclaiming, it looks like he is in shock, or he is super happy, things like that. Alright, so those are two examples that we have. And I'll go ahead and do another example. Um, but this time, instead of doing the human figures, I'm going to try and do a dog figure. Because, like I said, we can do simplified people or animals. So if per se you want to do a dog just like Keith Haring, we're going to go ahead and try and do his simplified version. So for his simplified version, the dog had pointy ears, right? And the pointy ears were right next to each other because Keith Haring wanted to do his dogs from a side view instead of being directly face on. So the ears are right next to each other. And then it's going to come out and do a mouth just like this. The line is going to come up and it's going to be a little rectangle. And you do another rectangle on the bottom. Looks kind of like an alligator right now. But this is how Keith Haring did his dogs. And that's one of the dog heads right there. And you can do a dog person. So you can do one of the bodies that we did up here, but with a dog's head. Or you can go ahead and do just a dog. So we're gonna go ahead and do a simplified body of a dog, which went out like this. Little pointy tail. And it had little legs that were just squares or rectangles. And remember, he did really simplified versions, so there is no like real details to these dogs. They are just really simple rectangles and squares with really simple lines and things like that. Now, let's say you wanted to do maybe the radiating baby. Maybe you wanted to add a radiating baby. All right. And to draw the radiating baby, what you're going to want to do is to go ahead and start with the little head. And I'm drawing this one kind of small because it is a baby, but what you can do is make it larger, obviously. And you're going to go ahead and draw its little baby butt. And it's just like this, just a little lump in the back. And basically his babies looked just like his people if they were down on their knees. You can add a little belly here and then have a little bent knee back here to make it look like the baby is crawling. See that baby is really simple. And you can add the radiating lines to make it a radiating baby. All right. And see, just like his babies. Now, if you wanted to do another animal, um, you could. Just make sure you practice doing simplified versions of it. So if I wanted to do a bird, I can try and do a really simplified version of a bird. I just have to try and make it look as though it were in Keith Haring's style. So what you can do, and we're going to do that up here. So what you can do is draw a little beak just like this. And remember they're really simplified. 
so we're not getting real complicated with how they look. You're going to draw a little beak, just like this. And then you can draw a little round head. And look, that already looks like a bird's head, right? Because this is the beak right here and that's the little head. And if you want, you can give that one a person body so it's a weird bird person like he would have probably done. Or you can give it a little basic bird body. So again, super simple. He liked really broad lines. So what you can do is do something like that, right? Just really simple, easy, and you can add a wing if you want. Going up like this. See? And that looks just like a really simple bird, which is what you want. You just want it to look really simple, really easy. So. What we're also going to discuss is how to get those bold lines. So I'm going to use my first example right here. And I'm going to take my Sharpie that we have. And we are going to go ahead and do the outlines for it. So make sure if you're using just normal um, copy paper or printer paper that you have something underneath it so that it doesn't get on your tables or anything when you use the Sharpie. But what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and trace the lines that you made. Except we're going to try and do refined lines. So basically we're going to try and make sure these lines look neater than the sketch lines that we did. So instead of doing like multiple lines and sketching it out, we're going to do one broad line. Just like that. And this is how we're basically going to refine our sketches. Um, but obviously this is not our final product. We're just going to practice how Keith Haring got his bold lines in his artworks. And we're just going to try and make them look like Keith Haring works in our sketches so that we can recreate it in our final product. So we're going to take that Sharpie and we're going to continue to follow the lines. And for right now, we're just going to go over it once, just to get a base for what the line should look like. And you can notice I'm not following my sketch lines completely the same, which is okay because you are trying to make it better, You're trying to make it look better than your sketch did. So you can do whatever line you feel looks right. We're going to finish doing these legs here. And feet. There you go. And so what you're going to do to make it look more like a Keith Haring drawing. You notice this kind of looks flat still. It looks not as accurate to a Keith Haring drawing as we would want. So what you should do is make those lines a little bit thicker because he, remember, liked really bold and thick lines. So what you're going to do is just go over that line again and just make it a lot thicker than it was before. You notice I kind of messed up here, which is completely fine because, again, this is a sketch, not the final product. It's good to do the best that you can, but if you mess up, it's not a big deal right now, okay? And you see we're just making those lines bolder and thicker so that they're even more noticeable than they were before.
doing the legs down here now. And you see I'm just going over it maybe two or three times with that Sharpie just to make sure that that line is as thick as we want it. And see, that just looks even better than it did before because now it looks just a little bit more like a Keith Haring drawing because of the lines being so thick and so clean. And now we can go ahead and do the Sharpie over the rhythmic lines that make it look like they're dancing just to get it one step closer to looking like a Keith Haring art. And look at that. It looks really similar to his work, doesn't it? And as you can see, the lines are just really thick, really clean, and it's okay. Again, if you messed up, that's fine. This is just a sketch, just practice. And what you can do is continue to black outline your other sketches, your other drawings, and make sure you just have a bunch to choose from. That way, whenever we get to our final product, you will have enough sketches to choose from so that you can pick three of your favorites, okay? And it's okay if you can mine like a dog with a person and a baby, or you can do all three people, or whatever you wanna do for your combination. Just make sure you have three really good looking sketches, okay? And by sketches, I mean I want it to look like this by the time you're done, okay? So you're gonna have sketches like this and then a little bit more of a refined sketch where you take your Sharpie and you're gonna outline it, do your rhythm lines, make it thick and as nice as you can get it to look for this, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and do the outline for my radiating baby just so you get one more example of what it should look like. And this one should be quick because baby is so small. And again, remember, we're going to make them bigger whenever we do our final project. I'm going to go ahead. I did my simple outline. Now I'm going to do a thicker outline. Just to give it more of that Keith Haring vibe. Then do the outlines to make it a radiating baby. there you go it looks more like a Keith Haring drawing all right so we're gonna go ahead and stop here with our sketches now that we stopped our sketches we're gonna go ahead and talk about what we're going to do next time so next time what we're going to do we're gonna pick from our sketches and our refined sketches and we're going to decide the three best sketches that we want to use in our final artwork and then we will go ahead and discuss the best composition that we can do for our final artwork and where we want to place each of our figures in the final artwork, okay? And then we will also discuss patterns and how we are going to introduce the patterns into our background of our Keith Haring drawing, all right? Thank y'all so much. I hope y'all enjoyed and I will see you next lesson.